Kosi Paul Hutchcroft, Professor of Political and Social Change at the Australian National University in Canberra, and uh, someone who's been uh, watching the Philippines, uh, Philippine politics for quite some time. Mina Mahalko ang Pilipinas, lagi ako babalik balik. So it's a pleasure to be here today to talk about some of the issues around the uh, the exciting creation of the Bangsamoro. Uh, autonomous region for Muslim Mindanao and in particular what it means for BARM to have a parliamentary system and what kind of implications this might have for the choice of electoral system. Key thing to keep in mind about a parliamentary system uh, is that it's quite different from the presidential system that is used in the Philippines at the national level. In a presidential system there's of course direct election of the uh, executive. In a parliamentary system, there is not direct election of the chief executive, in this case, the chief minister for BARM. Rather, there is a process in which the voters go to the polling place and elect the members of parliament. And then executive authority arises out of that parliament uh, to decide who will be the chief minister. Now, one of the things that is absolutely critical uh, if there is going to be a parliamentary system is that there be a clear mechanism for developing the coalitions uh, that are needed in order to uh, have that election of the chief minister. Now, if uh, there is a weak party system, there is likely to be a great deal of flux and flow and uh, frequently, uh, frequent elections um, that could be very disruptive to the stability of governance. Uh, and uh, you know, think about um, uh, some parliamentary systems that have uh, constant churn in the uh, prime ministers that, that come forth. So in a parliamentary system, precisely because executive authority comes out of the parliament, it's important to have a strong party system uh, within that to ensure the smoothest process uh, possible. Now, how do we develop stronger political parties? Now, ideally, there would already be strong political parties in place before BARM goes to a parliamentary system, but we know that's not the case. Philippine political parties are notorious for being weak entities, often very personalistic vehicles of, of politicians that come and go uh, and that uh, have very little permanence. But there are certain types of electoral systems that you can put in place with the goal of building stronger political parties. So if, if BARM is going with the parliamentary system, which of course it is coming out of the Bangsamoro organic law, it's critical to have an electoral system that goes with it that can try to build up stronger political parties. Now, broadly, first of all, looking at the um, law that has put it, BARM in place, the Bangsamoro Organic Law, it's important to note there's some really exciting innovations there that are not found anywhere else in the Philippines. There's a, in the electoral system in which 50% of the seats are elected via proportional representation, 40% via district seats, and 10% versus sectoral representation very clearly specified as to which sectors uh, will be uh, part of the Bangsamoro um, uh, parliament. Now within this uh, system, uh, it, it's, it's unlike anything that is found currently in the Philippines, but it's actually quite common in many other parts of the world. So a mixed electoral system, which is what it's called because it has both the uh, proportional representation element as well as the district uh, representation uh, elected by first past the post, whoever gets plurality, plus the provision for sectors. In having the combination of both proportional representation as well as the district seats through um, first past the post, the Philippi uh, the Bangsamoro organic, um, uh, the, the BARM, is actually emulating systems that are in place and work quite well 
in nearby countries such as Japan and Korea and Taiwan, as well as many other countries around the world. So that's the first thing to note about the electoral system. It provides for a lot of very important innovations uh, that you don't find anywhere else in the Philippines. But the critical question is, within that 50% component of proportional representation, what type of proportional representation will there be? Uh, there are, very broadly, two types of proportional representation. One we can think of as candidate uh, uh, party-centric that actually promotes party discipline, and another that is candidate-centric that tends to be associated with quite weak party discipline. So obviously, because executive authority arises out of the parliament, it's critical to have an electoral system that is party-centric, that builds stronger parties. And the system that does that, and forgive me for throwing in a rather technical term here, the system that does that, that is the gold standard around the world for building up stronger political parties, is the closed list proportional representation system. And within this system, parties have the opportunity both to choose and to rank the candidates that appear on their list. So if, a, if someone gets into the legislature but then moves against the party platform, the party has an opportunity to either get them off the list altogether or to give them a lower rank. So that's a really critical element of uh, closed list proportional representation. And so we can think of that as the party-centric one, the, the, the PR that builds up stronger political parties. Now that is, uh, uh, can be contrasted with, again, forgive the technical uh, language here, what's known as an open list proportional representation system within which parties choose the candidates but voters are responsible for ranking those candidates. Now that sounds like a better system, it sounds more democratic, it gives more voice to um, the, the voters, but in fact it is one that is very detrimental to the goal of building stronger parties because it breaks down the discipline that uh, would be so important, especially in a um, parliamentary system. So for that reason, I think it, it is there are some compelling reasons when the um, uh, Bangsamoro Transition Authority sits down to write the Bangsamoro Electoral Code to think carefully about closed list proportional representation, that is the party-centric type of proportional representation, as it has the capacity to build the party discipline that is absolutely essential to the proper functioning of a parliamentary system. So, what are some examples that help us to understand what sounds like a kind of uh, arcane and technical matter between these things called closed list proportional representation and open list proportional representation? Fortunately, we need to look no further than uh, Indonesia, which uh, is a little bit different, of course. It's a presidential system rather than a parliamentary system, direct election of the president uh, every five years. But within this, uh, combined with the presidential system, uh, Indonesia has shifted in recent years, between about 2004 and 2014, from a party-centric to a candidate-centric proportional representation system. Uh, again, in technical terms, it's gone from closed list to open list um, proportional representation. Now, as explained by my colleague Edward Aspinall, uh, we have a recent book out um, published by Anvil Press, Strong Patronage, Weak Parties, The Case for Electoral System Redesign in the Philippines. And within this, we have a chapter by uh, my, my colleague uh, Ed Aspinall, an expert in Indonesian politics, uh, on uh, lessons from a neighbor, the negative consequences of Indonesia's shift to an open list. And so uh, if you want to see an example of how what sounds like a small and technical matter has actually led to some major shifts in the way politics are done, I would urge you to have a look at that uh, chapter particularly uh, in, in the volume. The shift, uh, Aspinall argues, has led in Indonesia to less party uh, coherence an expansion and deepening of patronage politics and more expensive elections. 
He goes on, and let me quote, to say that this has fueled a vicious cycle in which electoral patronage fuels corruption, which in turn erodes the faith of Indonesian voters in their parties and elected representatives, making them ever more susceptible to patronage politics. So that in a nutshell is the importance of this choice that is to be made the Bangsamora organic law says 50% proportional representation, but it doesn't say what type of proportional representation. So I think there's a compelling case to look at closed list because of its capacity to build stronger political parties. Now, just as a final note, of course, I've, I've focused right now on the, the negative lessons from Indonesia. Um, but as uh, my, my colleague, uh, Professor Aspinall points out, there's also some very important lessons to be highlighted from the Indonesian experience as well. Uh, and that is the way in which there is, first of all, strict re registration of political parties. Indonesian political parties have to show that they have nationwide scope, with the exception of Aceh. There was a very important exception made there uh, because of the particularities of Aceh, but that you can, the, the overall pattern is that parties have to show that they are national in their uh, scope. And also something that well, I think could be very, uh, so within the Banco Moro, uh, uh, and um, within BARM, it would be possible to perhaps ensure that parties are registered uh, and show, thereby show that they have uh, scope across all of the major regions within, within BARM. The final point about the Indonesian system, another positive lesson to highlight, is the presence of thresholds, significant thresholds um, that are meant to reduce the proliferation of small political parties. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it doesn't matter exactly what that threshold is, uh, as long as it's somewhere substantial, maybe 3.5%, 5% comparative experience uh, differs from one country to another. But that's a way to make sure that parties have some girth, that they are uh, significant entities, again, uh, highlighting or uh, enhancing the prospects for a party system that can do what needs to be done in a parliamentary system, and that is to choose the executive from among its members in the most coherent and smooth way. Thank you very much.